Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Today we're going to be testing out the Skybreaker, a passive fit Skybreaker in the T2 Electrical Abyss. To be honest, I was thinking maybe it could be a, an option to do these in the Gammas, but the main thing with the Skybreaker is time, because when you've got single target waves, it's going to take too long. And uh, you want to capitalize on every possible way to increase your damage. And you can increase your damage by reducing the enemy resists. The EM resists, we do EM damage right here. So that's why I think the electrical size will be better. And overall, it's going to be nice that we have a bit better capacitor so we can't get neutered out and deactivate our multi-spectrums. Not that that really matters because uh, we anyway have quite a bit of capacitor to spare right here. But we'll have a lot more. Well, 3.9 gigajoules to be honest is not a lot. But in the electrical side, we will have a lot of capacitor to spare. Okay, let's get to work. Activate filament. Not using any implants. I am considering to use a booster if I do have any. No, I don't have any. Okay. Because sometimes you can get some nice login reward boosters, but I don't have any. Okay, activate the filament. So it really depends. If we get a rogue drone battleship, okay, rest in peace, Skybreaker. Oh, I should have actually changed my fit slightly. I should have put the triple water on tuning systems, but I did not. Okay. Get in range. Let's see now who we can attack first. We'll go for the the Leshax over here. Because then if it, the water projectile will just bounce off the Leshax. Okay, now we're coming up close. There's some rogue drones over here, so we'll just shoot a bit on these guys. We need to get a bit close to the Leshax though. Okay, come on now. Might be attacking the Leshax now that these rogue drones are getting close. Okay, that was pretty quick right there. Yeah, all rogue drones popped. Popping all those rogue drones. Giving us a bit of webifying right here. Let's see if we can push them together because I don't want them to get too far away so they can't get the water on projector to bounce off them. Be quite unfortunate right there. Hmm, they've got a lot of remote reps right here. Maybe we should overheat a little bit. If we overheat a bit, then we can maybe get some the critical damage to kill this guy because he's really repairing a little quite a bit. Come on, just one more hit. There we go. Okay, good. Now nah, there's no more remote reps for you. No reps for you. I, I think, I don't know if they have a local rep. I think they don't have a local rep. They just have remote reps. Yeah, because it feels like it's going a lot quicker now than the previous one. I don't see it repping up in the armor. All relying on those remote reps. The Trigalabias have good trust in them, but they're friends. You can see here the Leshax, they have very little HP and even then it's just going so slow in terms of taking them out. It does not look very promising for like something like a rogue drone battleship wave. We'll probably get absolutely annihilated. Okay, let's go to the biocumulative cache. Look, you see that structure is going down so quickly compared to that previous Leshax, it was just taking forever. Strike snipe. Snipes with 56 kilometer range. There we go, popped. Go with Electro Punch, the high DPS ammunition. Would have been better if we had gone with more DPS. We could have gone with like, remove the power diagnostic system, put a water tuning system, or maybe go active tank instead. That could have been an option too. Especially since we're in the electrical site, we'll be able to fuel a really good capacitor. Like this one right here, you see 0 0.7 gigajoules to spare, but then in the electrical site, it'll be really a lot of uh, capacitor to spare. Okay, finish this first wave in four minutes. We've got 14 or 16 minutes to spare. Let's hope the other waves are merciful on us. What have we got now? Drekovac, okay. I'm curious how this will go. We should focus the Kikimura first, but we want to get in close so that we can actually uh, orbit the Drekovac so that we don't take damage from the Drekovac. I worry that there's going to be too much remote reps so that we can't even go uh, destroy a Kikimura. So we'll see here. We'll see uh, if the Triglavis are merciful. They're usually not merciful. We'll see. Let's get close. We'll orbit the Drekovac at 500. Oh, well, they've got tracking pylon as well. 60% tracking assist. 
we can see here, can we outrep him or out DPS him? I worry we're not going to be able to do that. See, he's repping right there. He's got remote reps going on. Oh, I'm not sure about this. Seems like we're slowly getting through him. And also, a good thing about the trigger lava is, is that they remote rep their friends, you know? But we're doing damage to all of them by spreading out the damage like this so their remote reps are going to sort of be like broken a bit like their remote reps are sort of going to go a little bit all over the place so it's good in that way we'll overheat a little bit of the damage so that we can get the kikimura down because we do not want his damage to spool up too much he does a ton of damage his him is doing the most amount of damage to us right now he's tangling kikimura doing 100 uh, damage volleys but that's quite cool right there. You'd think that okay, it's annoying that you got the remote reps and the trick larvians, but on one hand on the all on the other hand they were able to like sort of confuse them a lot so that we can sort of spread out their remote reps. No, okay. no, we're doing damage to all of them at the same time, because like the Damavix are gonna go down soon as well. When a Damavix down, it's gonna be easier to get through the Kikimura because there's gonna be just a less overall remote reps. Uh, another less remote rep because of that Damavix going down. And we've been doing damage to their dragon back as well. That's really cool. Really, really cool. I think the Skybreaker would be an awesome Abyss ship if you combine it with another ship that's got a good single target damage. Like a really tanky, maybe Hawk or something. Hawk, maybe. A Skybreaker and a Hawk in Dark Sides. I don't think that's such a bad idea, actually. Because they'll both not be affected by the. I don't think the Vorton Projectors are affected by the Dark Side. They might be affected. I don't think they are. Maybe they are. If they're not, then it'll be really a really great combo. Because then you got the Hawk, maybe with some Rocket Hawk or something, able to do lots of DPS to the single target damage. But then you also got Skybreak able to just annihilate all these multi targets. Slowly but surely. This is going quicker, I feel like, than the Leshak way, because their remote reps are playing less of a role. Because here, the remote reps are spread out all over the place. There, the remote reps of the Leshaks are all focused on each other. So it feels a lot quicker here, actually. Go to the my community of cash. Our uh, tank is also really good. We got a really amazing passive tank. I mean, it wasn't really being charged here because we were able to speed tank the Drekovac and then the Kikimura. It was just one Kikimura. You, the Kikimura was the only real significant DPS dealer right here or damage dealer right here. So I guess it wasn't tested to its full potential, but. I think maybe a Sancho wave will really push us to the limit. Where's our resist profile? Okay. Yeah, because we've got lowest in the thermal and EM, especially the EM. The signature damage type of the Sancho. Okay, let's see. What we've got here? Lucid and Effialtis. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I think this will go pretty smoothly. Let's just hope. If we just get them all real close. Maybe they seem to all want to be very close, okay. Let's get them let's lure the Effialtis closer. So that they the damage can latch on with from the the little frigates over here. Come on now. Orbit five hundred, something like that. Okay, it seems like we're getting to do sleeper frigates pretty smoothly at least. Do we get smashing or penetrating shots? No, we just get hit shots with the Voton projector. Pop them like that. Lucid escorts taking more damage. Oh, it's annoying that the Lucid uh, or the Effialtis, they're spreading out all over the place. Can't really get any damage on them. Even though they seem to be pretty close, but they're just out of the range, I think. Just about out of the range for the Voton Projectors. And we're taking quite a bit of damage here. They're doing EM damage, so that's contributing to them doing a lot of the damage to us. And pop. We'll go for the FE Altus over here, because he's doing quite a bit of damage. It's not hitting any of them. Look at that, they're just spreading out perfectly. Like, it's not hitting any of them. Just going on him and not spreading on anyone. That's very unfortunate. Maybe we can pull range a bit, sort of lure them into each other or something. 
Maybe we could do that. I don't know. Is he remote repping? Yeah, he's remote repping that guy. You can see that lucid Aegis remote repairing. It could be an option to take him out. Now they're colliding into the asteroids. Now they might take a bit of damage. Oh, we get a free extraction node there as well. That's good. Get this extraction node. Spearfish as well. I wonder if three skybreakers would be good at uh, blitzing something like T4s. I think it would be an option or could be an option. Maybe a bit challenging in rogue drop battleships, but I think T4 should be enough to be merciful on the skybreakers DPS, especially if you have three. If you have a DPS fit skybreakers, you have 130 overheated DPS and that's multiply that by three. Get four, almost 400 DPS. Should be enough to get through a rogue drop battleship on T4. Okay, so we seem to have completed this T2 right here. I really didn't think it would have gone this smoothly. But there we go. A Skybreaker can do a T2. I'm sh pretty sure the wrong wave at the wrong time will pop us. But we could also adjust the fit as well. But definitely I think the battleship wave is just going to be the end of us. It's just not going to be enough DPS to be able to get through these smoothly enough to be a, like a reliable abyss ship. It's unfortunate, it's just the way it is, just because of the nature of the single target damage being so bad on these ships. Okay, let's get out of here. Abyssal loot, 11 million. It's quite typical for T2 in frigates. What was the time? It was 12 and a half minutes. Or 12 minutes and 15 seconds. So that's it. Skybreak and T2 Abyss. A bit surprised right there. Surprise right there. But there you go. It's able to actually get through some of these sites. And I guess if you think about it, like many of these abyss waves not all of them because like some many of them scale by just increasing the amount of targets you've got on grid and in that way it's going to take the same amount of time as a t1 because you just got more targets you're still going to multiply the damage even more but then there's some waves that just scale by hp so like the rogue drop battleship for example he doesn't there's no more rogue drop battleships they're just more hp in the rogue drop battleship that way is going to take a lot longer but when it comes to waves like road drove frigates for example you're just going to have more uh, targets and it's just going to take the same amount of time because you can usually hit max 10 at a time and you you like not be able to put that to this full potential in the t1 so you're going to be getting more out of your potential in the t2s or up so that's something that i think that's great about this ship right here but i think it would go really well with like a hawk combo or some kind of ship to aid it in the single target damage department so that's it for now Skybreak T2 Abyss. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.